All right, let's talk about how we would add and subtract rational expressions. Before I add and subtract a rational expression, I want to take a look at just a basic fraction addition problem. So let's say I have 1 sixth over 4 ninths. And we need to add these two fractions together. Remember that the denominator can be thought of as a unit, meaning that the units have to be the same in order to add them. Well, we need to think about what we need to make 6 and 9 be so that they're the same. And that is called the least common denominator. We need to find the least common den denominator between 6 and 9. So, um, I'm going to just go through the multiples of 6 until I get to one that is also a multiple of 9. So 6 times 2 is 12, that is not a multiple 9. But 6 times 3 is 18, 18 is also a multiple of 9. So I need to make those denominators equal to 18. So I multiply 6 by 3 to get to 18, and I multiply 9 by 2 to get to 18. Now notice that it's 3 over 3, which is 1, and I can multiply anything I want to by 1. Here it is 2 over 2, that is also 1, and I can multiply 4 ninths by 2. Whatever makes that, those denominators the same are what you need to multiply by. So if I go and rewrite this fraction, 1 sixth as 3 eighteenths, and I rewrite 4 ninths as 8 eighteenths, then because their denominators are the same, you can add them together. 3 eighteenths plus 8 eighteenths is 11 eighteenths. You do not add 18 plus 18. 18 is like the unit and the unit does not change. Okay, so now that we know how to do it with just numbers, let's try that same process with expressions that involve a variable. Let's start out where their denominators are actually the same. If their denominators are the same, then you get to just add the fraction. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and then x minus 5 is going to be the denominator. You do not add x minus 5 plus x minus 5. It just carries through as the denominator, just like before. Now, remember, you cannot cancel terms. You can only cancel whole factors. So because 5 and x minus 5 don't cancel, then we have this 5 over x minus 5 as our final answer. Okay, let's take a look at one where they do not have the same denominators. So here I have 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x. Notice that they do not have the same denominator. So finding the least common multiple is really the trickiest part of these. And what you want to do here is find the factors. So the denominator here has x and the denominator here is x minus 3. I will multiply, I need to go and balance the denominators out. That's really what I'm doing here. So because I only have an x here, this fraction needs an x minus 3 to balance. You balance with whole factors, not with terms. Okay, so here I have an x minus 3. This needs an x on both sides. So I'm going to go and balance out with the least common denominator. Whatever one piece is missing, that's what it needs to get. So I have 2x over x times x minus 3, and we have 1 times x minus 3 over x times x minus 3. All right, distribute the 1, but in this case you don't really need to distribute. So I have 2x plus x is 3x, and I have minus a 3 over x times x minus 3. You do not need to factor your final expression unless it's going to cancel out. It doesn't look like anything will cancel, so there, that would be our final answer. You cannot cancel x's because they're in individual terms. 
All right, so let's say I want to add 7 over x, 6x x squared minus 2 over 9x. The first thing we need to do is find the LCD. That's the trickiest part of this problem. So we can find the LCD between the constants. Between 6 and 9 is 18, right? We already saw that problem. Now the LCD between the const or the variables is x squared and x. So we would have x squared would be the variable LCD. So really what you're trying to think is you're trying to balance each side out so that they have that LCD. So what we end up with is I need to multiply 9 by 2 to get to the 18. And I need to multiply the x by x to get x squared. For the first fraction here, I need to multiply that 6 by 3. And the x squared is already x squared, so it's only just the 3 that we need to multiply by. So go through and multiply each of those fractions. So we've got 21 over 18x squared minus 4x over 18x squared. Now that their denominators are the same, we can just add the fractions. We've got here 21 minus 4x over 18x squared. And this would be our final subtraction of the two fractions. Let's take a look at one more. So I have 3x over x minus 1, all subtracting 2x over x plus 2. And I want to find the subtraction of these two fractions. The first thing we need to do is find the LCD. So I have a factor of x minus 1, and then I also have a factor of x plus 2. So the actual LCD is x minus 1 times x plus 2. Okay, now it's actually easier to find the LCD when you have whole factors like this as opposed to up here where you had to kind of balance it all the way out. All right, we've got to take the left side and multiply it by what the denominator doesn't have, and that would be an x plus 2. We will take the right side and multiply that by what the denominator doesn't have, and that would be x minus 1. Okay, so then we go through and we simplify each of these si fractions. So it would be 3x times x plus 2 all over x plus 2 times x minus 1. And then the second part is minus 2x times x minus 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, now we can add the two fractions together. So what we end up with is, I'm going to do the distributing here. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is plus 6x. Then I have a minus 2. Minus 2x times x is minus 2x squared. Negative 2x times negative 1 is plus 2x. All over the denominator. x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is some basic simplification here. So I have 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared. 6x plus 2x is plus 8x over our denominator, x plus 2 times x minus 1. And there we have it. That is our final uh, added or subtracted fraction. It's x squared plus 8x all over x plus 2 times x minus 1.